the UK economy officially fell into recession at the end of last year, and this was Chancellor Jeremy Hunt's response earlier today. The primary objective is to bring down inflation, and actually if you look at the underlying data in the economy, we are succeeding in doing that. It's fallen from 11% to 4%. Well, hang on a minute. Let's just sit on a shelf for a moment that it was this government that helped give us the highest inflation in 40 years in the first place, in part due to its incompetent management of the UK economy. When inflation started to accelerate early in 2022, then Chancellor Rishi Sunak attributed the rise to global factors. Now, current Chancellor Jeremy Hunt is claiming it as a success for government policy that it's come down. We have a plan uh, that we are sticking to, which is bringing down inflation. Never underestimate just how thick this lot think we all are. And just so we're clear on this, by now even Larry the Cat knows the job of cutting inflation is for the Bank of England. So any suggestion the government is responsible for it falling just insults the public's intelligence. We need to stick to our guns and independent forecasts to say if we do that, uh, inflation will come down to its target in a matter of months. Seriously? Remember this, contrary to what the Prime Minister and his Chancellor keeps telling us, falling inflation is not a tax cut for hard up families. Falling inflation just means prices are rising more slowly than they were before. It does not mean that price levels are actually falling. So it won't immediately help the families struggling right now. Real wages have been going up now for six months. Well, imagine the shock for the Chancellor when he finds out real wages in 2024 are forecast to be lower than they were in 2006. Just think about that. And I do believe that in the long run, uh, lower taxed economies tend to grow faster. Well, again, imagine the shock for the Chancellor when someone tells him that under this government, taxes are on course to reach their highest level since the Second World War. And his latest measures put the UK on course to have the biggest tax raising parliament in modern history. And when they run out of excuses for all this, they come up with this. It's ordinary people who pay the price for Labour's tax rises. Seriously? We've also had a pandemic. We've had a Ukraine war. Well, no arguments from me on that one, but the Chancellor will fall off his chair when he switches on the news and hears reports like this one. The Centre for Economic Reform claims the government has lost out on £40 billion in taxes because of the damage done to the country's output by leaving the European Union. How can Sunak's government possibly fix the economy it's broken? while sticking its head in the sand on the catastrophic impact of Brexit on the UK's economy. The loss of GDP due to Brexit and exiting the EU single market is put conservatively by the Independent Office of Budget Responsibility, a staggering 4% of GDP by 2030. The Conservative government is likely the first one in history to negotiate a trade deal, which actually involves walling itself off from a trading bloc made up of its nearest neighbours making it harder both to sell your stuff and buy their stuff. Some might call it economic lunacy. And if you need further evidence of this government's insane management of the UK's economy, just listen to this from the Chief Secretary to the Treasury. Are you saying that come what may, even if employers begin to struggle and your, pro your promise of growth gets torpedoed because nobody can find anybody to do the work, that you're going to bring down the numbers come what may? I'm not just saying this, Trevor. I'm telling you that we have a plan to make sure that this is the case. Is it any wonder the UK is the only G7 economy where real household disposable income per head has not recovered to its pre-pandemic levels? And the OBR has slammed the government's spending plans beyond 2025 as worse than fiction. Are you proud of how the Conservatives, not just your government, have handled the economy? Well, if you look at what's happened since 2010, uh, the economy has grown faster than France, Germany, Italy, Japan, many other similar countries. Well, let's take a look at that. How are we doing relative to other big economies? The Chancellor argues our relative performance has been solid given the global shocks we've been through. Last week, he highlighted this chart 
which shows the UK has grown 23% since 2010, better than Germany, France, Spain and Italy. But be cautious about this comparison. The UK's relative outperformance has been heavily driven by population growth. What determines the economic things most of us actually care about are incomes and wages. It's not overall GDP, but productivity growth. How much we're producing per worker or per hour worked. So let's use Newsnight's global tracker to take a look about how we're doing here. This is the output per hour productivity of other G7 countries since 2010. And here's the UK's performance. So better than France and Italy, but quite a lot worse than Germany, the US, Canada and Japan. But economists say there's another key point to appreciate about the UK's productivity performance since 2010, when Labour last left office. The significant slowdown relative to those preceding years. Here's the UK output per hour growth between 1997 and 2010. We were second only to the US in that period. So on productivity, we've been doing worse after a period when we were doing better. And there you have it.